Expert Broadcaster is widely known as an all-in-one live streaming solution and content creation package, but its robust feature set allows it to be used as one tool as part of a larger production. So in this edition of the studio, we're gonna talk about how you can use Expert Broadcaster as a media management tool for larger productions. So what is the media management role? Well, in traditional broadcasts, usually you have something that's known as a VT operator or video playback operator. And this would be a person that basically manages a bunch of videotapes and plays them. And then the person on the main switcher, the technical director would switch to those video files. So it could be a series of ads or another news report. But in more modern mobile broadcasts, what you would have is a dedicated machine running XSplit that manages your media files. It could be images or video files or even web pages. And then you have someone on a main switcher or main encoder also running XSplit or a hardware switcher. And then they switch to this person's output to play the different video files. Because the person that's doing the switching can't deal with a bunch of different media files. And a lot of times video files can change throughout the broadcast. So they need to focus on the show and switching and leave this role to this person to manage all the media files. So the way this works is you're going to use the video playback tools within Expert Broadcaster. So when you add any video file to Expert Broadcaster, you can just drag and drop it. If you right click on it, you'll see this media control playback tools. So the first one is the play section. So this one you can set if you want the video to play once or a custom amount of times, or if you want it to loop. Next are the specific playback parameters. So I think the most important ones here is what you want it to do when the video ends. So I recommend setting it to nothing so it'll stick on the last frame because you don't want it to rewind because it might go to the first frame and usually the last frame is the best. Or you can set it to hide if you don't want it to show anything. But then you'll have to rewind the video and re-enable it again. Then there's also check boxes. So I would recommend turning off remember the playback position because usually you just want it to play at the beginning of the video rather than the middle and then leave play on scene enter enabled as well. And if you're gonna be playing a lot of videos, like as part of an ad break, I would say add it as a video playlist and there's the same options available here. And you can also add image files and even web pages if you need to display different stuff on your video playback output. All right, so now you have your different scenes set up. How are you gonna output this video to the main switcher? Well, you're gonna connect it to the main switcher by using the display output on your GPU and sending this to your switcher. You might have to convert it to SDI and make sure that your desktop is set to extend, not duplicate. And then you're gonna use the projector function with an XSplit and then you're gonna output your live scene to the projector of the display that's going and being captured by the main switcher machine. So not whatever you see on your screen, but rather the extended display. Another thing too is you might need to send audio to the mixer so you can use one of your audio outputs to do this or you can de-embed the audio through HDMI or SDI and send this to the mixer. Make sure to check your levels and make sure that you're actually outputting to this HDMI output within your PC as well. You're going to have to use your sound control options for this. The other way is through NDI, especially if you don't have as much equipment. So if your computers are on the same network, you can output NDI and as long as if the switcher machine can take in NDI, it'll take in this feed. The only drawback to this is NDI takes up a lot of bandwidth and you won't be able to send out the audio to a separate mixer to control mixes. And if there's too much network traffic, like if there's too many NDI signals going in on one router, it could get a bit stuttery. There's some useful tips with this setup. So the first one is whenever you're playing back a file, make sure to keep the source menu open. It'll actually show you a countdown of how many seconds is left in that video file, even in a video playlist. And this is really handy because it'll help you queue back in your technical director so you can give them a countdown, you know, five, four, three, two, one. Another important thing is to create a blank scene. So a blank scene is basically just a scene with no sources added. And the reason why you wanna have this is you might wanna have this as like a safety type scene. So when the director switches to you, you're on this scene and then you switch the video because a lot of times videos might start on the first frame. So it can be a bit weird if you don't time it correctly and press play at the right time and there could be like a frozen scene or if there's a frozen scene at the end, you don't want to show this. So you just want to fade out to it. Another thing is if you're getting any new video files from like a client or something, you might want to re-encode them using Handbrake. A lot of times clients will send you the super high res, high quality, huge file that, you know, might be hard to play back. So definitely try to re-encode it. 
And finally, if you're gonna be playing a lot of different video files, it's good to drop them in your editor and normalize the audio levels so that they're basically reaching the same peaks because you don't wanna have you know, one video file come in really hot and the other one come in really low. And then you're just gonna make your audio engineer's life a lot harder, quickly changing levels and getting everything at the similar level. And you don't wanna, you know, kill the headphone users. So like I said, Expert Broadcaster is a very powerful tool, not just for doing the overall broadcast, but basically dividing into different sections. If you'd like to see more tips like this about how you can use XSplit in a larger broadcast, let me know in the comments and be sure to check out our masterclass about how to put together live event streams. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if this was helpful and be sure to subscribe for more videos and the next time we're in the studio.